today on Mother Mayhem. It's okay not to have all the answers. We don't have to be the most personally developed versions of ourselves at all times. It's okay to not know how you want to spend your time, so long as you're willing to find out. What's really important is that you not go back to your mom or the person or the situation before you're ready. Hi, it's Heather. Welcome back to Mother Mayhem, the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Podcast for Daughters. Now, in just a bit, I want to start a conversation with all of you about taking space. So many of you are afraid to take it because that can be so triggering for the narcissist in your life. They see it as an attack, and then, of course, they actively work to disrupt your peace. It's also hard because many of you struggle with people-pleasing and perfectionism. It can feel like you're fueled on paying attention to others so that actually taking space almost in itself feels nerve-wracking. Will you know what to do? Will you take space correctly? What does healthy space look like as opposed to numbing out, tuning out, or otherwise shutting down? We're going to get into all of that in just a bit. But first, I want to share with you some of the things that I've been thinking and feeling about the show and our community here. I had no idea what was going to happen when I first got it into my head to press record and start this show. What has happened in just our first 26, now 27 episodes, really has been nothing short of magic for me. Women coming together from around the world in this really incredible healing journey of recovery. I can't quite believe that it's me behind it, And I've really come to care for all of you, and I've really come to care about what we're all doing here together. A listener wrote in to me recently, and this is what she had to say about the show and how it made her feel. When my life first came crashing down, and I was sitting in pain and the fresh smoky rubble of it, I used to meditate with an image in my mind of a woman on my right whose hand I was holding, and a woman on my left whose hand I was holding. Each of them had a woman on the other side of them whose hands they were also holding. And each of these women were holding the hands of other women and on and on until we covered the world. I would then say to them in my mind, I know what you're feeling because I am feeling it too. It helped me remember that I wasn't really alone for I knew so many others were suffering in the same ways I was even though I physically felt so isolated. Now I'm thinking that maybe that image is actually coming to pass with real-life women who, along with me, are going to have a chance to share. Thank you for being one of the real women in my life holding my hand today. (laughs) When I tell you I burst into tears and wept like a baby when I received that, no joke, when I tell you there's tears in my eyes reading it all over again, whew! No joke. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a natural-born crier, so the crying thing isn't really much of a surprise, but I'm just so incredibly moved, and I'm so incredibly proud. Also, though, I said out loud when I first read it, me too. I feel it too. A community of women coming together in real life to heal. I feel that too. I feel the hand-holding too, and I am so here for it. I wanted to check in with all of you and invite you into a conversation that Clark, who you're getting to know, she's the editor of my show, and I are having about this community and what happens next. Now, honestly, when this whole thing started, I always planned on my private practice and then on doing the podcast. I hadn't expected that by talking alone into a mic in my own little office that I would be feeling a deeper connection or a deeper call. But I do, and I keep wondering about it. What if this isn't it? What if we aren't just a podcast community? What if there's more? Clark and I are going to get ourselves together at some point in the coming weeks to formalize the conversation into a survey for all of you that I'll invite you to participate in. But 
I have to be honest with you. I'm just too excited. I want to hear from you now, <laughs> like right now. You can write to me at heatherdaughtersnpd.com or you can DM me over at daughtersnpd over on Instagram. But I really want to know what you've been thinking because I'm about to share some of my ideas and I want to know if they spark anything in you. First, let me just say this. If we're just a podcast community and that's all we are for you and all you want this to be, I want to know that too. If this podcast is enough for you, and you don't need or want it to become more, I would really like to know that. I do not believe and build it and they will come. I believe in asking if you would all like something additional built. Now, if you're looking for a deeper connection, I just want to share some of my own daydreams and ideas that I've had so far. And honestly, I'm just beginning with this, but my ideas are all over the place. They're running the gamut. Before I even jump into that, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I need to first say, because it's really important to me that I communicate transparently with all of you. This podcast is always going to be free and available, and it will never be behind a paywall. Any additional quote-unquote bonus episodes will be available for all. I don't imagine that this will ever be a podcast with advertisements either. Because I hate ads and podcasts. I don't think I want my show to have them. This is where it all started, and this is where it will stay. And if that is enough for all of you, it's going to be enough for me too. I can imagine that even the thought of hearing me talking about changing anything, even if I'm just adding to it, can be a little anxiety provoking for some of you who have come to depend on it. So I want to reassure you of those things right away. This show, me, the whole thing, not changing. It's going to be what you've known it to be. I'm just wondering if it's this and perhaps something more. Now, the first thought I had was perhaps offering online workshops where we meet on Zoom and we dive in together deeper into some of the topics that we talk about regularly on the show. We'd be able to engage in some back and forth. And I have to let you know that at the outset that these would be paid workshops with an expected price point of about 15 to 25 US dollars per call. Anyone signing up would be able to come to the call live and they would also receive the recorded session in their email. Now, I'm imagining we would do workshops where we dive deeper into building better relationships with yourselves workshops on building better relationships with other people, your spouses, your friends, co-workers, workshops perhaps on mothering your own kids after a childhood of maternal narcissistic neglect, and workshops on building better boundaries and limits with your mothers. Notice, by the way, how that one came in last. Your mom comes in last in my book. First, we take care of you, and then we deal with your mother. Likewise, I have to tell you that I've also had this other thought of come as you are office hours where you would be invited to pre-submit questions and I would do live coaching on the call and others would be invited to listen in and learn. Those calls too would be recorded and sent in an email and again you could probably expect it to be anywhere between 15 and 25 US dollars per call. The way I'm thinking about that and the price point to be transparent is it would be the same as a therapy copay session, if you're lucky in the U.S. healthcare system, some of you have really, really high deductible plans, and those are brutal. So I'd be cheaper than your average deductible plan. Also, though, this is a big one for me, and I, I even feel shy about even starting this conversation. But I live in Southern California, and I also have to admit that I've started to imagine a three or four day in-person retreat on these same topics. I would keep the retreat small. I don't really imagine any more than 10 to 12 people, and I know that that would be more of an investment. I've never hosted a retreat, so I actually have no idea what the price point would be off the top of my head on that, but I could tell you that I would want you all to stay in a really nice place, maybe on the water or near the woods, because I would want to use nature for some of the grounding exercises I would want to be offering you. I would want you to be able to eat well, and I would want to bring in other people to help support you. I would want it to be all-inclusive except for airfare, so you would know everything was paid for when you were arrived, 
and you would only have to worry about healing. That's a big one. The other thing, as I have this conversation, I have to be really transparent again. I hate social media. I like it personally because I love seeing my favorite pottery people and my favorite artists and all the creative people I follow. But for business, I really don't like that engagement is at the beck and call of the almighty algorithm. I don't want to build a business on social. I don't want to build a business on someone else's rented land. When I think about what that means for me, I've also imagined maybe like a paid online community that is off of social, but it has discussion rooms and monthly live calls. And it would be off Facebook or Instagram. There's this online software called Mighty Networks that would give you your own login and password. So you'd come to our community in the same way that you might come to Facebook or Instagram, but the only other people that would see that you were there were other community members, and you would be able to interact with other community members too. I get a little hesitant on that because I don't know if any of you are in some of these narcissistic abuse recovery groups that you can find on Reddit or on Facebook. I avoid them like the plague because you're the people I take care of. You're my priority. I don't need to start taking care of anybody outside of my community or my client list. But I also experience some of those groups as potentially re-triggering or re-traumatizing because you're surrounded by other people's stories. It can make you create stories that your trauma isn't as bad as other people, or you're really, really aware that your trauma is worse than other people's. And it can be really hard to self-regulate how much of someone else's story um, and hearing about it is supportive versus unsupportive. But I do know that so many of you feel isolated in this experience. And I have wondered if an online community together might be the answer. I'm also learning, P.S., that apparently you can build your own app for something like that. I think that's way above my pay grade. I don't know that I'd be able to do it. Clark seems to think she could be able to do it. But we would be looking at a $25 to $35 monthly fee, and we would probably do add-ons of additional calls or additional coaching materials or something like that would be an extra fee or something like that. But that's, that, feel, that one feels big, honestly, and feels like a bigger commitment. So I would definitely want to know that that is something that people are eager readers about. And lastly, this one sounds so wackadoo for me to say, but I have been known on this show to give you all some homework, right? I've never created any kind of physical product before. I have no clue as to how to do that. But again, that is why I have Clark. And she thinks we could offer you all like this physical companion journal that would have my prompts in it, my suggestions, companion guides. And no worries here, I would not have a narcissistic abuse recovery title blazing across the cover. Probably just my logo, so we would all know that it's a recognizable sign that we're all in it together. And again, no clue about the price point on that because I've never done it, but you can assume for the price of your average journal. Those are the kinds of things I've been thinking about, and I wanted to communicate transparently about the investment expectations so you would know ahead of time what I was thinking, rather than saying yes to something, only to be disappointed by the price point when the offer comes out. And it, I really do want to know what you think about this. So if you like it, love it, hate it, have other ideas. Oh my gosh, if you have other ideas, I want to know. I want to know about everything. Please do find me over at heather at daughtersnpd.com or over on Instagram at daughtersnpd and let me know what you think. And so long as you deliver it respectfully, I will receive it as intended. In other words, please be nice. (laughs) This is vulnerable for me to ask, and I have seen people be treated horribly when they dare to offer paid services. I know I always want to do this show for free, but I also know my value, and I know I can't continue to give away myself for free. Nor do I want to model for any of you that that is a way of serving or helping people. I would never, ever want any of you to give yourselves away either. Okay, so here's some more real talk and why this episode is about taking space and modeling for all of you how to do it. We're talking about trauma on this show, and that is a really heavy and hard topic to talk about, and it requires a deft hand. I have to be honest and let all of you in on it. Each episode that you hear takes me about four hours to do, 
And some of the episodes, like the alcohol recovery one I did several weeks back, that one took me as much as 10 hours to do. So when Clark and I were really set up for success, I was four weeks ahead in episodes. Now I'm zero weeks ahead. I had a sinus infection that set me back for a few weeks because you would not have wanted to hear those episodes coming out of my nostrils and my mouth. And then I took a two-week vacation. So I'm talking to all of you on November 22nd, 2023, the night before Thanksgiving, for the episode that's supposed to be released next Wednesday. It's Thanksgiving week. We're entering the holiday season, and my queue of topics is heavy, and it is going to require consideration and time. And I'm quite aware of what you all are carrying this holiday season, and I know what I am carrying as well. And I think if I push out the next episodes without taking a break, the show is going to suffer. I was putting pressure on myself to not take a break, to keep being present, and to keep taking care of you as this was the holiday season. And last week, I realized I would be taking really shitty care of you if I didn't stop and go back to what makes this show what it is for you. I need time to catch up, to build the queue back up, and to take really good care of these episodes, the show, and all of you in the same way we've been doing all along. I... Honestly, I wish I was one of those podcast hopes that was like totally on top of it and could totally confidently name the date that I was coming back. What I'm thinking of, if I'm really honest, it looks like that right now, those jam-packed, process-oriented episodes that I've been come to known for, they're probably not going to come back until January. I want to carefully keep them. I want to do right by them. And I don't want to worry about overstimulating or re-traumatizing you listeners as you're also navigating the holidays and probably navigating more tricky situations with your mothers. Now, if I was your actual therapist in real life, I would be telling you to hold off on listening to more trauma content right about now. As you're already navigating your relationships with your mothers, or the loss of your mothers at this really loaded time. I would be telling you to listen to more self-care episodes, more motivating content, and more soothing content. If I had some of that lined up for you myself, I would surely offer you some of that. But this show isn't going to stop being what it is. It's a trauma recovery podcast. So might I suggest one of my favorite podcasts called It's Gonna Be Okay. It's a daily podcast of quick five-minute episodes that remind us of one okay thing each day. Now, last week, I talked to you about glimmers. It's Going to Be Okay is basically a show of people's glimmers. You can probably see why I love it so much. I'm going to go ahead and link to that in the show notes as well. Now, as far as Mother Mayhem, we are a trauma recovery show. And during the holidays, we often need to give the trauma less attention And we need to give self-soothing, body regulation, self-care, and time with chosen people and nurturing relationships more attention. I know that this is going to disappoint some of you because you were counting on the show for consistency, familiarity, and company during a particularly lonely time of year. For those of you feeling that way, I want to share with you that last night, I myself I was feeling a little bit sad and overwhelmed, and so I watched Somebody Feed Phil, the Lisbon episode. It's my favorite. I've seen it so many times. So if you're worried about missing the show or you're looking to it for comfort, might I suggest that you do what I did and just revisit some of your favorite episodes of this podcast. If you haven't taken the time, by the way, to do the journal entries, I would suggest that you revisit the third episode and use the time to do those journal entries, and I will link to those in the show notes as well. If you haven't yet listened to the first eight episodes in order, now is also a really great time to do that. Because honestly, first of all, I don't mind saying I spent a lot of time being really deliberate doing those in order. It would be great for people to listen to them in order. 
but also from a clinical perspective and a less selfish one. I really did use those episodes to frame recovery. So they're filled with coping strategies. Episode five in particular is all about regulating from a hypervigilant state and nothing triggers hypervigilance like the holidays with your moms. Some of you are probably going to be thankful for the break in shows. There have been 25, 26 freaking episodes and I'm not exactly known to be someone with a few words. You can also just consider this to be your open invitation for catching up. But I do hope to offer some touchstone episodes, which is how I'm thinking about them, between now and January, because I don't want to lose touch with you for six weeks. And I don't mind saying that, especially after the first conversation I had with you at the top of the show, this feels vulnerable for me. I don't want us to lose momentum. I don't want to lose my connection with you or your trust. Mostly, I feel like we're on to a really good thing here, and I don't want to fuck it up. But likewise, I feel as though I've come to know a lot of you through your emails and your letters, and I really do feel that you're going to get it and that you're also going to agree with me because I trust that you all know my good intentions for you, for the show, and for future-proofing the integrity of the show. I hope all of that makes sense and feels okay for you. And I don't mind saying that taking space is for sure vulnerable. But also, I know you all like me. So how do you all do it when your mothers are less receptive, they're not intuitive, and they can be demanding and challenging about your limits, no matter how kindly or how carefully you communicate them? Hopefully, you're in on the Kool-Aid here, and you know that I've modeled for you a lot of this in this episode. Because here's the first step. You want to notice when something feels uncomfortable in your belly, and you want to pay attention to it. You want to notice your breathing, notice how quickly or pressured your thoughts are starting to feel. And I think a lot of you get so in tune to others and their energy levels that you forget to check in with yourselves. You're so used to pushing through discomfort that it becomes your status quo. You aren't paying attention to the things that are starting to feel hard. Here's how it happened for me. Last Friday, I started thinking of the show as I was driving to get a pedicure. (laughs) The car was silent and I could hear my heavy sigh as I was thinking about the episode I had originally planned for this week. And I tried to navigate how I would hold that conversation for all of you after you had just gotten through Thanksgiving. In the parking lot, I found myself looking at the calendar, trying to figure out in what time I was going to be able to work on the episode, how I would get it to Clark in enough time for her to edit. And that's when I realized I really needed to start listening to myself. So right then and there, in a nail salon parking lot, I closed my eyes. I took several deep breaths, and I asked myself a question. What? is true for me. And everything you just heard me say was the answer. If I keep going on as I have been, I'm setting myself up to fail. I would rather disappoint people because I wanted to keep the integrity of the show than because I started putting out shit episodes that sounded like I was phoning it in. I then picked my safe person, Clark. She knows how much doing this show right means to me. She knows the standards I've set for the show because I've hired her to help me maintain them. She was my safe person, and I said, I'm just saying this out loud to see how it sounds. I think I need to take a break from the show, and I said some of my thoughts, and I asked her how that sounded. She was feeling it too, being up against the wall, feeling boxed in, and knowing we were better when we were a month ahead in episodes. I then walked away and did nothing. Well, I got the pedicure because priorities, but then I let it sit until Saturday, the next day. I then asked myself, does this still feel true for me? Is there any more truth that I need to think through or tell myself? Then I worked through my steps of transparent communication. Remember, we've talked about this before. We transparently communicate so we can tell people what we want them to think so that we don't have to worry about what they think. 
many of you listening, you all have a spidey sense. You probably knew before I even jumped into this conversation that I sounded different, that it was going differently, and that something was up. Knowing how hypervigilance works, I knew you would assume the worst. So for all of you, I started right away with reassurances. I still care. I am doing this to preserve us. I know this is important to you. This is important to me too. I do this to give you the honest reassurance, but to also help you prepare for the loving limit. You are all used to this show coming out with a new episode every Wednesday, and we're not going to be doing that for several weeks, and I know the timing could be hard as it's right before the holidays. With your own mothers, you may not always lead with that much reassurance, but whatever reassurance that's truthful for you, you say that. You have all earned my reassurances and my nurturing. Your mothers may not have earned yours, and that is not something that's owed to them. You might also notice here, and this admittedly was hard for me, I didn't apologize. I didn't say I was sorry for not being able to keep pumping out weekly episodes because I know I get to have my limit, my boundary, and I get to protect my peace, even if it disrupts the emotional experience of my most loyal listeners. Same is true for you and your mothers. You may fear her wrath. Whatever the equivalent of me being put on blast on the internet might be how you feel if you were to take space from your mom. You would fear her blast. And then you probably likely try to soothe it over with some sort of apology. But you're not doing anything wrong. If you're dysregulated, hurting, or struggling, you get to take space. And your mom doesn't have to get it. Then you want to communicate the limit and what she can expect. So I was a little bit ambivalent, right? I couldn't tell you a definite date that I knew I was coming back. And if your mom has you all wound up and hurting, you might not know that for yourselves. Either you're going to do your best to remain calm and communicate what it is you know. If we move it away from me in the example that I've been trying to model, it might sound something like this. Mom, our conversations in recent weeks have been really tense. Things have started to feel combative. We've been here before, and I think we're only going to escalate if we continue. I want you to know that I need to take some space. I'm not going to call or communicate for the next two weeks. In two weeks, I'll check in and see if you might be ready for some reconnecting. If things still feel hard and you need more time, that's okay. We both have to be ready at the same time. Or it might sound like, Mom, I don't think texting is a good form of communication for us. I hear what you're saying is critical, and it seems that my communication with you is always disappointing you too. Instead, I think we should plan on talking once a week on the phone. God help you, once a week with some of you mothers. Space that out as needed. Or vice versa. Mom, our phone calls have not been pleasant. I think we need to hold off on phone calls for the next few weeks. Let's plan on keeping it to text or email. Now, I know that in my example with all of you, I am really lucky. You all like me well enough, or I like to think you like me well enough, and I know I like you, so there is some trust established. While I know the internet can be a nasty place, I haven't actually yet received too many harsh or brash comments from the wide world web. However, you have all likely received several brash comments from your moms, so I know it's going to be different for you. But receiving brash comments is not a reason not to take space. That's why you want your chosen people to know what's up. You want to build a support plan. You also want to know ahead of time, like before you talk to your mom, what are your boundaries? What are you going to accept? What aren't you going to accept? And what are the consequences of being pushed back? Me? Whew, I've already got a plan. If a hater comes at me, I am going to publicize the shit out of that comment and I am going to use it as a teaching moment for all of you so I can model how to respond to hate when you haven't earned it or deserve it. So many of you know you don't deserve it. You just don't know what to say about it. So if someone comes at me, they have given me permission to use their comments as a teachable moment. 
consider yourselves warned, people. (laughs) Now, if someone just respectfully tells me that I have disappointed them, I am going to hold that and honor it with all my might. And I'm going to reflect back so they can have a positive experience of telling someone they're disappointed and feeling heard. You might need your people of choice on standby for moral courage. You may need to be prepared to block your mom for a period of time. You know her go-to manipulative tactics. A friendly reminder here, by the way, if she gives you the silent treatment, you can quietly thank her to yourself. She is showing you in her behavior that she is incapable of that conversation. Instead of feeling punished or chastised, recognize that she is showing you who she is and believe her. If she comes at you in a belligerent way by calling you sensitive, accusing you of not caring, attacking your character, or anything like that, remember to be direct and remain unapologetic. I know that's true for you. I know you think I'm a better daughter if I listen to you berate and criticize me. I have to accept that my backing away means you're going to think that of me. I accept that that means you might not want to talk to me when I check back in, and that's okay. I want to remind all of you here that your mothers are not the only people you might need space from sometimes. Not everyone is a narcissist, but that doesn't mean we don't need space from them from time to time. Sometimes you're going to get so caught up in like frequent conflicts or misunderstandings with someone. Sometimes you're going to find out that you're just out of patience. And sometimes no one will have done anything wrong, but you are going to feel in your body that you just need a break and to decompress. All of those are okay reasons to take a break. Listen to your bodies. Hear what they're trying to tell you. Ask your bodies what they need and listen. If you're not sure, but you feel that weird feeling in your belly, ask your inner child. See her sitting on a bench and sit next to her. Ask her what's up, what she's feeling, what she needs. Ask her what's scaring her. What would make her less scared? Hold her hand. Let her know that you've got her. Even if you don't know how it's all going to go, it's okay to let her know that you've got her and that you're working on figuring it out and making the best decisions for her. Oftentimes, when we feel that need for space, we're dysregulated. We're caught up in fight, flight, or freeze. We want to listen to that experience. We want to pay attention, and we want to honor it. And if you shove that down, you are telling your bodies that your experience doesn't matter. If you skip it and you go on as normal, you're risking your own mental health. You're abandoning yourselves. One of the reasons why it is so hard to know yourselves or to know what it is you want is that you abandon yourselves as this automatic reflex. And sometimes, most times, you don't even realize you're doing it. But if you can stop and slow down and check in with yourselves and ask yourselves what it is you need and then allow yourselves to have it, you are changing your dance and your pattern. You are changing the system, and by reflex, everything else starts to change with you. And it starts with that, giving yourselves permission to stop, pause, and readjust. It is going to feel so new and so scary, and that's okay. You all have to get your reps in with that. You have to get your practice in. You've never done it before. So, of course, you're going to wonder if you're doing it right. And, of course, it's all going to feel unfamiliar and maybe even a little bit awkward. But as with anything, the more you get your reps in, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get doing it. And once you have that space, you might not know what the fuck you're supposed to be doing with it. Me, I like doing a lot of different things. I do tend to get quiet so I can catch up with myself. But I also, on the other side of it, I I like chats with my friends so that I can be reminded a little bit of who I am. Sometimes you need to hear your own voice to have it reflected back to you. I also need to be outside around waves or water or woods. And I really, (laughs) no shopper here, like my music, my podcast, my TV shows, walks with my dog, etc., etc. 
Clark is going to be really happy to hear me say this because I also really like cleaning and organizing and decluttering when I can't get my head straight. I like getting rid of as much proverbial shit as possible. And I have to be honest, it takes some getting used to. You might immediately feel relief at that empty space, or you might find yourselves anxious and lonely in the silence. You might end up fearing retribution. Often, you all stay on some level of contact with your moms because it often feels like the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. You can see her coming in a way. That anxiety and that nervousness doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means you're introducing yourselves to a version of yourselves that you haven't yet met. So go ahead and find out what she likes, find out what she doesn't like, what feels good, what doesn't. We are all works in progress, my friends, and you are all on your own respective paths of getting to know yourselves. It's okay not to have all the answers. We don't have to be the most personally developed versions of ourselves at all times. It's okay to not know how you want to spend your time so long as you're willing to find out. What's really important is that you not go back to your mom or the person or the situation before you're ready. If you're not used to taking space, you might have a story about it that it makes you weak, that other people wouldn't need to be taking space, that you're being needy or sensitive. Here's your friendly neighborhood reminder that we all have needs. Having needs does not, by the way, make us needy and makes us human. A lot of people who take space find that space works for them, and they feel that relief immediately. They feel their truth in their bodies, and they know they did the right thing. Sometimes in the stillness, they hear themselves, and they know what to do next. Others feel like, knock, 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 is this thing on? And that's okay, too. Meet yourselves where you're at. Accept yourselves where you are at. Taking space is finding peace with yourself first and foremost. So whatever you need to do to feel more at rest, more at peace, and more at ease is what you need to do. Ooh. All right, there's one of my deep breaths for all of you. I um, would encourage some of you to take some as well if you're finding yourselves as wound up by this as I am. This was a lot. We covered a lot of ground, kind of, in what feels like a quick period of time. I'm not going to find that out if that's true until Clark edits the show. But here's a quick reminder. Like I said at the start of the show, we really do want to know your ideas, your responses, and your interest in expanding the Mother Mayhem community. Anything that I suggested, those online workshops, the journal, the in-person retreats, the online community, having your own app to log into, everything would be off social. I cannot say that enough. You can write to me over at heather at daughtersnpd.com, or if you're not averse to social, you can DM me over on Instagram at daughtersnpd. Now, if you're hurting for what to do in between episodes, don't forget to revisit the episodes, especially one through eight in order. But please don't binge this podcast. This is not a binge-worthy podcast. It is too much to do too much in a week. <laughs> don't do more than two episodes a week. Also, don't forget, you can check out the It's Going to Be Okay podcast. I'll set a link up in the show notes for that. And hang tight, because just in recording this episode, I already thought of my first touchstone episode that I'm going to do. It's definitely not coming out next week. I am definitely taking a week off next week, but maybe the week after. So stay tuned. Thanks so much, all of you, for being in this with me, for accepting me and for being the kind of community that really allows me to lean into an honest conversation like this. It means the world to me that I could just show up and tell you the truth. I am behind, and I need to catch up. Thank you for the grace I know you're already showing me, and I really hope you're extending that grace to yourselves too. You are in this with women around the world. And now maybe you're even holding hands. If that doesn't weird you out too much, I know some of you are probably weirded out by the holding hands thing, but I love it so much. <laughs> I am in it with you too. 
not just on the days that the episodes drop, but on all the days in between. Bye for now. I'm so grateful that you're here. You're right where you're supposed to be. At its heart, I'm hoping to use this show to build a community of women working together to heal from childhoods marked by maternal narcissism and emotional neglect. My goal for Mother Mayhem is that this show becomes an advice and mentoring-driven show where you share your questions, struggles, and stories, and I offer you direction for healing and recovery. That can't happen without your contributions. I invite you to send a recorded voice memo or write in an email with your questions and things you're struggling with. You can always find me over at heather at daughtersnpd.com. To connect further, I invite you to find me over at Instagram and occasionally on TikTok at Daughters NPD. If you know another woman who needs this conversation in her life, I'm going to ask that you share the show with her. You can help me get the word out with your reviews and social shares of the show, and I hope you'll consider doing so. Special thanks to Heather Clark for editing this show. She's in my head and knows what I meant to say when the words come out backwards. Thanks for your time today. I'm always in it with you. Bye for now.